After searching around the shop I did find a piece of steel that is not hot roll so I'm going to use it and I've already laid it out and I'm going to cut it off. Here's the dimensions. It's two inches by uh, one and a half up to the line so I'm going to saw it off to that. Now this is a 3 8 thick right here and, and so is this piece in fact and <clears throat> I would recommend that you use a piece that's 3 8 thick but for some odd reason I found this in my junk box this piece is uh, 437 and a half thick and I don't know why it was marked it must be a gauge or something but I, I hope it's not too hard for me to to saw and deal with but that is the stock that I'm going to use for this clamp so I'll be right back after I saw this and I uh, mill it to one and a half approximately. Now I've been getting an awful lot of comments from people saying well why didn't you do it this way or why didn't you do it that way or I don't like the way you did it but remember that when you're machining it's like mowing the grass. I mean you can, you can mow it any old way you want and at the end of the day the grass is mowed. And It's the same with machine shop project that uh, you can use your own creativity. You do not have to do it exactly the way I do. If you're a brand new newbie to the to machine shop it might help if you do it in a similar manner uh, because you haven't uh, been able to experience things yet that allow you to make these decisions but uh, you know just just go along with I'm saying what I'm saying here so be back in a minute all right that piece was as soft as butter so it's milled down to uh, one and a half inch by two. Now on the two inch I, I failed to tell you moments ago that in fact this piece is less than two. Why? Because of the setback that is necessary uh, for the lathe bed. Remember the rack is under there. I showed that to you earlier. So ultimately I have to take off uh, another uh, eighth of an inch off, off of here. But I'll do that later. Now I, I know that uh, this could all be laid out as far as the holes are concerned with uh, the drawing if there is a drawing or as a, just with the layout but you know I love to transfer th holes because then they always fit so here's how I'm going to do it just by taking uh, the two pieces together now normally if you put two pieces in a vise only one piece is going to really be held I think you know that but for some reason these two pieces are equally gripped either by sheer serendipity or the fact that there's some wiggle here on the movable jaw and it's probably the latter. So now I'll simply take my transfer punch which is uh, 5 16 and transfer those two and I notice I set it on the wooden table here. Someone got very angry at me for doing uh, some gentle wrapping on my granite surface plate even though this is from Grizzly and only cost $25 and, and if I ruined it I would only have a minor uh, anger about it. Minor. Now you see those two holes you do that any way you want. There they are and if I don't let uh, the drill slide off, that is if I truly drill the holes and uh, it will line up if I, drill, if I drill them accurately. Now I always, always take it over and I don't always show this and I pre-drill them on my macro drill press with an eighth, with a sixteenth inch bit and that just ensures in effect I'm deepening the center punch holes. I know I'm over talking here but uh, that's why I do things and then it works. If you take those extra little steps in your workmanship, your craftsmanship, things will work. They won't fail on you. Now I'm going to drill those and I won't show that. They are to be in fact drilled well, I always pilot drill them, so, you know, 16th inch, then uh, about 3 16ths all the way through, and then quarter inch, which is, in fact, the tap drill size for 5 16ths 18. See you in a minute. Okay, those holes are drilled. Now, let me point out one other thing here, and there may be no need, but I like to use this block as a tap guide. 
In other words, I'm going to tap right through this and into this other piece. But notice that the tap doesn't go in there. Even though the 5 16 bolt does, the tap doesn't go in there. So what I'm going to do is open up both of these holes to the letter O, which is just four thousandths bigger. And here is a letter O, and in fact I've already opened up this one to a letter O, and I've circled it with the letter O. So the bit goes in there, the bit doesn't go in there, the, uh, the tap does not go into that one, the tap goes into this one, even with a little resistance, but it'll go in. In fact it did a minute ago. There. I told you. Why am I making a big deal about that? Because if you tap these holes even two degrees off of square, they tend to bind on you later on. Now if you don't have the letter O, just open it up to the next fractional size uh, over 5 sixteenths, whatever that is, I, I forgot. But my point here is I'm going to tap right through this piece, so it's a tap guide now, and into the other one. And then when I'm uh, done with that, I'll put a bolt in there and tap the other one. Then I am absolutely assured that they line up. A bit overkill, possibly. Okay, one hole down, and notice I put a bolt in there, and do that if you, if you feel like it. And then I'm tapping the other one. And that's 5 16 18. That way I know darn well that the holes are the tapped holes are perfectly perpendicular. Okay, the holes are tapped and the, the screws turn freely, no binding whatsoever. The next thing that I need to do is to take one eighth of an inch off of the end right where my finger is, and I've already set the uh, height gauge. Get yourself a height gauge if you don't have one. There's the layout line, and I think I already explained why. We need an eighth of an inch off because uh, of the rack on the bed of the Atlas lathe. So I'll take that over and mill that off on the bridge port. Okay, the eighth inch is off. Now you want a little wiggle room. So it doesn't bind. And that was accomplished by drilling those two clearance holes just slightly oversized. Now the next thing and possibly the last thing I need to do is to put this step in. So let me lay that out real quickly and uh, we'll be done. Looking at the prototype, the step here is one eighth inch deep, quarter inch wide. I've already put bluing on the part and with this uh, gauge set at eighth inch that's the depth although I will dial it in on the milling machine and then as far as the, the step is concerned quarter inch this really should be up against an angle plate Right there. Now the reason I put red on here is that the red part is the part that I want to remove down to that line. Not the little piece out here. So be careful you don't mill the wrong piece. The wrong part off. Not that I've ever done that. At the bridge port, the work held up high on parallel so I can see the layout line. I simply bring the uh, cutter touch off, lock the quill, back off, I scraped a little bit, I don't care, zero out the dial on the, uh, the knee, and I think I'll take this all in one pass, so, no I won't, I'm going to take off a hundred thousandths, then I'll take off the final uh, twenty-five thousand. so up I go, 
one full turn, which is a hundred thousandths. And then I'll just mill to the line down here because that isn't very critical at all. last pass to the line. I will raise the table 25 thousandths and do it all over and then I'm done milling here and I won't show that. Okay the milling is done. I spent a few minutes deburring. I took the layout die off and again let's re let this represent the Atlas half inch bed which is the one I own and putting it on like this make sure that it truly does clamp down tightly and it does and if it does not then you need to play around with the dimension right here on the step until you get it to pinch remember now we got a setback here if I can bring that out to the end remember that little setback here is where the rack rides so that is necessary now let me uh, reverse it and see if it holds on the 3 8 and it clamps securely on the 3 8 bed which probably most of you have so then uh, you would go this route and probably not even bother with that step it would simplify it just a little bit for you if it doesn't pinch, then take a little bit off of the bottom of uh, the block, the main block here. Just take a few thousandths off. You can determine how much is needed to be removed by putting a feeler gauge in there if, if you are suffering from that syndrome. Now, do you smell something? I smell the sweet smell of success. Let's go on over to my uh, craftsman lathe and set it up over there. I'm at the Craftsman, and there she be. It locks down nicely with a wrench. It can be slid in any position you want, and some minute adjustments made here, even with a lock nut, although I tend to just loosen it up here and move it into position, but you can do that any way you want. So there it is. Uh, hopefully a successful project, and some of you may want to build this for your shop. In summarizing, you can paint this thing, color of your lathe, you can blue it, or you can do nothing, which is what I will do. You can also take this corner off, like I indicated there with a the red marker, or put a radius on there, like, like that, possibly a radius up here. Do whatever you want to streamline it. I'm not going to do that. I'm done. Now, there's a possibility, if there's enough views in a future video, that I will modify this either make another one or modify this one to be micrometer uh, uh, dial so you have a little more control over it. I may or may not do that but watch for that. But I think that pretty much wraps up this video. This is Tubal Cain saying thanks for watching and be sure and watch my many other videos. So long for now.